So today, do you want to paint a galaxy scene with me? I don't know why I'm asking, I'm going to do it anyway. Where's the corner? There it is. God, I hate watercolour pads. Come on. The trusty palette knife technique. Why is this glue so tough? There we go. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different, something that I've never done before, and paint one of those really simple galaxy scenes and put some wildlife in it. I've seen it done before, I've seen it done really easily, like it's in those really quick how-to videos, but I thought I'd give it a go myself and see what I could do as a professional artist. So I'm painting on some hot pressed watercolour paper, just because I don't have a canvas handy, and to start with I think I am going to prime it with some white gesso. You probably don't need to do this step, but I just want to do it because I'm going to be layering quite a lot of acrylic onto this paper, and I want to cover it with a bit of the gesso just to protect it and make that paint go on a little bit easier. There's my gesso. There's my brush. Just going to cover it with one quick layer just to prime it, just to protect it. Hopefully it'll help the paint go on in the later stages. Get plenty on there. Get rid of that hair. Come here, little hair. Yeah. Right, come here. Come on, come on. Oh, oh. Yes, the trusty palette knife saves the day again. Through the magic of video editing, I'm gonna let this dry instantly. The vast majority of these videos that I've seen have started with a black acrylic base wash. So that's what I'm gonna start with as well. Got some black paint. I need to buy some more. There we go. I'm also going to mix it up and put a little bit of red in and a little bit of blue. So much blue. Then I'm going to get a flat brush. I'm not going to thin it down. I'm just going to take some of that black and start placing it all over my paper. Then getting a little bit of the blue, mixing it in. A little bit of red, a little bit more black. I am sorry for the rattly desk. If you can hear that. If not, I don't apologise. Lots and lots of variation. Variation is the key to make painting look interesting. So I'm not just painting the background a solid black. Putting in a couple of different colours in there. Just so we've got some of that interesting variation. Let's make a little bit of a purple. Yeah. Lathering up that paint. Plenty of paint on there. Nice solid base. And the more paints that I actually put down, the easier the paint actually goes onto the paper as well. As you start to lose the grain of the paper and everything just becomes a little bit smoother, a little bit easier to paint on. Also, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't have a reference photo. I'm not watching one of the videos as I do this. I'm just making it up on the spot as I go. So fingers crossed it goes well. Otherwise, this is gonna be a waste of a video and a huge waste of all of our times. Get all the little bits of white out of there. And then through the magic of video editing, we're gonna dry. Okay, now that's dry, we're gonna start putting in a little bit of a lighter color. And I want a bit of pink, which I'm gonna make using some red, a little bit of this neon orange, and then some white. In fact, I'm also gonna use a little bit of this Arteza neon pink. Put that over there. Ooh, that's a nice colour. And let's see what this magenta looks like as well. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. So I am going to start with a bit of the blue. I'm going to water down this, sorry, bristly round brush that's all frayed. I'll start with a bit of the blue and I'm just going to start just feathering it down. Probably do this with a sponge. I've seen a lot of people do it with a sponge. I'm just going to do it with a brush just because that's what I'm used to. Ooh, that needs a bit more paint. Bit up here, bit up here. This probably actually would have been faster with a sponge. But I'm here now. I'm not going to make things easier for myself by going getting a sponge and walking the 10 feet it is from my studio to my house. Instead, I'm going to spend the next probably hour faffing around with brushes, even though I could have done it in 10 minutes with a sponge. Oh no. So can you see how some of the black paint is coming off the paper when I'm doing this? That is because I haven't let it dry for long enough. If you leave your paintings to dry for long enough, then 
that acrylic is not going to come off the paper. Um, it's something that happens with a lot of people's work. So you can see like it started to happen here, it started to happen here. That is because I'm rubbing the water and scrubbing over the top of the black paint. Um, and because that black paint hadn't fully adhered to the surface of the paper, then it's going to start to scratch off. I'm not too bothered about it in this particular painting, mainly because I'm going to be building it up in lots of layers anyway, and I do want some lighter areas showing through, so it's not going to particularly affect the painting process that much, having some of that white layer showing through, having some of that paint scratched off. Um, but if you are doing something that that does sort of require you to have solid paint and not have these scratches in, then I would recommend waiting for your paints to dry before you start to apply them. Get a bit of, bit of a darker section just over here. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna use a softer brush again. I think maybe having the softer brush might help at this stage. So a little bit more blue. Yeah, that's better. It's not as scratchy. I'm not gonna remove the paint as much. Okay, gonna do the same thing with a little bit of our magenta. A little bit of water on there. Just start popping this colour on. A little bit down in this corner. Get a little bit more magenta. Start dabbing it on a little bit more rather than just blending it in. A little bit more saturated colour. Just dragging that brush back and forth. This is actually quite difficult. Like this isn't my usual method of painting. And I think this is why a lot of beginners actually struggle with acrylic paints. Um, because they try to paint like this. They try to blend all the backgrounds and all the colours all in one go or, or in a couple of layers when really to create really blended backgrounds and like really blended colours with acrylic paints you do have to work in, in a lot of layers, like five or six different layers before you'll even get something resembling what you'd get with oil paints. Okay, I think I'm going to dry that off again. Okay. What are we going to do next? We're going to go a little bit lighter with the blue. So, just clean my brush off. Going to take a little bit of white, mix it in with my blue paint. And that's going to make it a little bit more opaque now. And just a little bit more water. And we're just going to start to put in a little bit lighter blue. Oh, it's much easier with a softer brush. Not even being particularly neat with everything. Like, I just want this haziness where some bits are a little bit more opaque, some bits are a little bit more transparent, just flowing through everything. Okay, if you think you're getting a bit too opaque or everything's getting a bit dry, just a little bit of extra water. Good idea for the soft fluffiness. Circular motions with your brushes. Just stops brush marks from getting in there. A little bit more water. Blend this out a little bit more. A little bit of blue up here. Hazy blue. And we can come in. Just going to get a small filbert brush. Just going to come in a little bit more black. So just really watered down. It's going to come in. Probably don't need that much. Just come in, put some more of this black in. Again, that same circular technique. Just trying to blend it in with the colours that we've already got down. Now, if the circular technique doesn't work, just a back and forth, almost like an X shape, a cross pattern. Just dry brushing the paint over that surface, or scumbling it over that surface. More over here, because I don't want to lose all that black. A bit more up at the top, a bit over here, but not much. Probably, again, easier with a sponge. And a little bit in here as well. More, and then a little bit in our blue over here as well. Let's add now a little bit more of the magenta, try to make it a little bit more saturated. Using this smaller brush so we can be a little bit more refined. Take that solid paint, just as it is, start to apply it in cool little galaxy patterns. Now, I'm not bothered about it being uniform, just starting to add some squiggly lines and some squiggly shapes, like those galaxy patterns. It's actually quite therapeutic painting like this. Like not knowing what you're actually doing and just making it up and having a bit of fun. Ooh, a couple of dots here and there. Maybe a little bit of this. I'm going to get a different blue now. A little bit of this cerulean blue, which is a little bit lighter. 
And again, doing exactly the same thing. I'm gonna take my cerulean blue, not watered down very much. I'm just gonna start to come in and put in just a few more of these like galaxy pattern things. Just where I think they'd look pretty, pretty cool. Or pretty. <laughs> it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I am just making it up as I go along. I think it's looking okay. I don't know if it's looking amazing yet, but we'll see what I can do. Try and add a bit of variation. So I'm not doing the exact same brush strokes all the time. So I've got, got a bit of a straight edge over there. Just blending it in a little bit. Keeping some of that straight edge. A little bit more paint in some areas. Whee! I am just literally just chucking the paint all over the surface of the paper. Not being precise at all. You know what? I think I'm gonna add a little bit of green. I've got this really nice emerald colour that I think I'm gonna pop on there. Ooh, look how nice that is. I think that's really gonna complement some of the blues in this top. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that pop. I'm not gonna go overboard with the green, just a little bit in some places. A little bit over here maybe. A little bit just down here. Just that extra little bit of colour. Extra little bit of variation. Okay, I like how that's looking so far. Gonna get a different brush now. Gonna get a smaller filbert brush. And we're gonna take a little bit of white and just lighten up this blue. Just gonna start coming in and just trying to get a little bit more light. Just dabbing my brush. Trying to keep it quite soft. Just gonna put some more of this color down the bottom. I want like the glow of the earth going upwards. So I'm gonna just add more of this color just over the bottom just to lighten everything up but i'm going to keep it quite soft so i'm just using the same technique in fact i could probably go with a bigger brush so i'm going to get the well that's still got some black paint on it i'm not going to do that i'm just going to use this one if you, if you haven't noticed already i'm quite lazy with my painting process dab 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 why do you take so long okay then I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Oh, a little bit more over here. Okay, now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the black. I'm just going to start to come in and just add a little bit more of this black everywhere, just to break everything up a little bit. A little bit more of that dark sky back in, especially near the top. I'm using quite a watery paint, so that we've got a bit of transition. And we've still got some of the nice colours showing through. Okay, let's get now a little bit of that neon pink. I'll just start to that just in some places over the pinks. And transitioning into these blues a little bit. Why not? I want a little bit more of the blue now. Maybe a bit more of a turquoisey blue. So I'll add a little bit of green in there. Make it a little bit lighter. And we'll do the, just the same thing just in some places. Oh yeah, look at that colour. Just where I want some of that colour to pop. Then I'm going to take another brush, and again, super light now, super watered down. Just want to start to put in a little bit of a lighter glaze. We can use the same really light colour, but we just want a lighter glaze. Just over areas like this, just a, a thin haze. Okay, then I'm going to take my trusty toothbrush, and what we're going to do is take some of this lighter blue colour that we've created. Oh, I don't hate that actually. Oh, I've just had a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna take my big brush. I'm gonna take some of that lighter colour and I'm just gonna go bam. Quite wet, quite watered down. I want it spreading out a bit. Then I'm gonna take a spray bottle and just spray. And then I'm gonna dry it off with a hairdryer for a bit. Okay, trying not to spill any more water. And now I'm gonna take some of that lighter color and hopefully start splattering a few stars with my toothbrush. Okay, starting to get somewhere now. I'm gonna dry it off again. So to finish it off, I wanna just put a couple of like the edges. I like it when they've got a little bit of edges when you see these galaxy paintings. So I'm gonna take a little bit more white. Just a tiny little bit, and just with that blue and a tiny brush, a bit more of that blue. I just want to put like an edge around some of this and just blend it out using my small brush. Blend it out a little bit more. I really like, I love these like edges that get defined by the light. 
Maybe I'll put another one over here. And maybe another one, another little one up here as well. Okay then, to finish it off, just gonna take that toothbrush once again. Little bit of whiter paint now. Still mix it with a little bit of blue if you wanted to. Little bit lighter, trying not to make that same mistake. And then just in the brighter areas, just gonna start to splatter a little bit of this. Oh no, we don't want that. Little bit of tissue, try and get rid of it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take that small brush from before. In fact, let's get a bristle brush. Get some of this white paint on and just more, more paint, a little bit more water. And I'm just gonna start pull that up because that is too much paint. I would just like some bigger drops. That's all, all I'm aiming for here. Just some more definite stars, which I think I might have to put on with an actual brush if this doesn't work. Get some of this with the tissue. And then get that small brush just using that small brush and some of the white paint. Just gonna come in and just add in a few bigger. Just like that. We're not finished yet though. What I wanna do now is I wanna add a little bit of a white glaze up here and it was actually working quite well using the tissue. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of the, the white all the way across the bottom, just using the toothbrush. And I'm gonna just continue to use the tissue just to dab a little bit of this white upwards in like a glow. Then a little bit more, but I'll do this using a brush. It's right brush, just this soft one. Again, just getting my tissue, dabbing it. This could be done with a sponge, probably a little bit better to do it with a sponge. But again, I can't be bothered going getting more. Okay. It wouldn't be one of my pieces if I didn't include some wildlife, so that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to take some of the black paint and we're going to add some silhouettes of some deer down here. So I'm just going to start to block in. I'm just using this pure black for this final step. And first thing we're going to do is create like this embankment. So I want it at a little bit of an angle. So I think this is the angle that I'm going to do. I want it a little bit higher up on this side over here. Just want it all completely covered. If you need to, a little bit of water, just thinning out that paint a little bit, make it a little bit more maneuverable. And then I'm gonna start just with the thin end of the brush, start trying to pick out some little blades of grass. Keep the paint quite thin and just trying to vary up the strokes a little bit. Some long ones, some short ones. And the filbert brush is really good because you can get some thick strands some thin strands, and it just, that, that variation in doing this just makes it look that little bit more realistic. We can then even get the smaller detail brush, some black, and we can start just putting in some even, oh, too much water, too much water. We can start coming in, putting in some even, God, still too much water. Some further little varying marks, just like little leaves or little flowers just dotted around. I want this to imitate quite tall grass. Okay, I think that will do for the grass. Nice, easy step. Now we've got to think about what's going on the grass. And for this, I'm gonna first draw out what I want to do. So I've got my pencil, and what I want to do is try and draw some deer. I want my first deer to be, where do I want his head to be? I want his head to be about here. So I'm just gonna start constructing a little circle. The head, a little bit of a neck, coming into a bit of body, give him a little bit of a muzzle, one ear, give him a back ear, a little bit of a neck. Put one leg, give him a second leg, then a bit of a back, a little bit of a tail, and then back leg, and another back leg here. And then let's give him some antlers as well. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, okay. There's our first deer. Let's put a second, slightly smaller. I have a female deer. Ears, his legs in, so they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Give her a little tail. And I think we're also gonna have some form of tree here. That will be our main tree branch. I have a secondary one here and 
and another one here, and one going off, and then another fork here. So I think that is okay for my deers. Let's now get, I'm gonna get a small filbert brush for the first stage, and then I want a very, very fine detail brush or a liner brush for the rest of this process. So I've got them both here. So we're gonna get our black, and I'm just gonna start filling in my deer. Dead easy process once you've got it all drawn out. I don't know why, but painting with black is always the most boring part of any painting, whether it's spots, whether it's leopards, whether it's silhouettes like this. I always find this bit the most tedious and the most boring part. Give me his little tail. Now his little ears. We'll save his antlers for last. Get his other leg in. And then repeat the process for the little doe on this side. Little nose. Little mouth. Just making sure to cover all of the pencil lines. These lines nice and sharp. Back leg in. And always just add a little bit of water if the paint's not going on smoothly enough. Okay. Let's then use the liner brush and use it to get these antlers in. There we go, one antler. Let's get the other one in. There we go. Now let's get a round brush and we're gonna make a start on that tree. We have plenty of black paint and we're gonna work our way up from the bottom. Plenty of paint and we're gonna start to construct the trunk of this tree. Starting with these main branches and then we'll start using that smaller liner brush again for the other details. Okay, now I've got the basis of the tree in, I can come back in with that liner brush, just start to put in a few extra little thin branches, twigs, and further extensions. Again, super boring part of this painting process, black. Okay, I think that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. Let's peel the tape off and see how it looks. This is the most satisfying part of the painting process for me, peeling this paint off and leaving that nice, clean or semi-clean edge. Let's try it from the top. I think this deer's head is slightly too big, but I, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Like, it's not perfectly proportioned, but it, it's not too bad for what it is. But for how long it took, I am pretty impressed with the outcome of this piece. I hope you've enjoyed the video and please let me know if you like this style of video. A little bit more paint along with me rather than me sort of teaching things and doing things. But it's me trying out new things and sharing that process with you along the way. Please do feel free to copy this painting if you'd like to. I've not got a reference photo but but you can paint along with me with this piece, so use this if you want to. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.